Welcome back to Life With Us TV. It's your girl, Lynette. And it's your boy, Stanley. This video is for the first time cruiser. We know that you're nervous, excited, and overwhelmed all at the same time. Yes. So in today's video, we're gonna give you 25 things that you should know and be aware of on your first cruise so you can take that cruise with confidence. All right, let's go ahead and get into this video. The first thing every first time cruiser needs to know is that the price that you see on countable.com mm -hmm. will be the same price you will see on a third party site right. or as well as with your travel agent. Now, sometimes you might find that when you go through a third party site or to a travel agent, they might end up giving you additional incentives like an extra 50 or $100 of onboard credit right. to get you to book with them. But at the end of the day, that base price is the price. It's going to be the same. So to save you a whole lot of time, just go ahead and book directly with Carnival.com mm -hmm. because that's going to be your best deal. The second thing that every first time cruiser should know is the documentation required to embark on your cruise. All right. So let me give you a combination of what the things that are that you need to bring. First, if you are traveling with a passport, a passport is not required, but we highly recommend it. So if you're traveling with your passport book or your passport card, pair that with a state issued ID. If you do not have a passport, you can, as long as you're leaving the U.S. and you're coming back to the same U.S. port, you can travel with a birth certificate, but make sure it's a valid birth certificate. What I mean by that is it needs to come from um, vital statistics, mm -hmm. health department, just an agency. If it comes from a hospital, mm -mm, that is not <laughs> a valid birth certificate. That is what they call a vanity birth certificate. So make sure you have the right one. When in doubt, order a copy and just go ahead and make sure you have the right one. Then you pair that with your state issued ID as well. So now that we have your official documentation out the way, you're going to need your boarding document. Yes. Your boarding document and your boarding pass, same thing. You will get that in your check-in process, which happens a couple of weeks before it's time to get on your cruise. So don't worry about that right now. You will get an email for your check-in process, and then that will populate for you. Along with that, your luggage tags will populate as well. You're going to need all of that to bring that on boarding day. Once you have that, you're good to go. Yep. All right, the third thing every first-time cruiser should know, if you're looking to make payments on your cruise, just mm. know that you cannot book a last-minute sailing right. because the cruise line require you to have the cruise paid off 90 days before the sale day. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking to ask them to, if you're looking to use payments, please book your cruise out at least 12 months yeah. or longer so they give you time to make payments on your cruise. Exactly. The fourth thing that every first-time cruiser should know is every adult in the cabin up to two can bring one 750-milliliter bottle of wine or champagne on board on embarkation day. You just have to bring that on and walk it on. You cannot put that in your luggage that goes under the ship, your check luggage. And also, people ask us this, you cannot bring no hard liquor. None. If you try to bring hard liquor and they find it in your bags, they're going to confiscate it and yep. take it from you. And, and um, you're not getting it back. And you ain't getting it back at the end of the cruise. Not at all. Yeah, so no hard liquor. Nope. All right, the fifth thing you should know as a first-time cruiser before you embark on your first cruise is that if you feel like you're prone to seasickness, mm -hmm. please get you either sea bands or Dramamine. drama mean. Right. Not only that, you want to make sure also that you book yourself in the middle of the ship. Right. Uh, my wife actually has vertigo issues, mm -hmm. so she always books us in the middle of the ship. So if you are right. a person that has that as well, make sure that if you call Carnival to book, if you go on the website to book, make sure your cabin is in the center. Exactly. And don't forget them C-bands and drama mean. You're going to thank me later. You ain't never lie. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the sixth thing is, keep in mind, shorter cruises yield to being party cruises. Yes. You hear me? So if you want a more relaxing cruise, I suggest you go to the six to seven days and on up. If you want that party and that rah-rah, then go ahead and book you a shorter cruise. I can almost guarantee you it's going to be a party cruise. And let's go ahead and up the ante. If you want a really turned up cruise, book it for one that leaves on a Friday and like possibly gets off on a Monday. <laughs> Don't say I didn't tell you. 
So what's the um, sail links? Um, what's considered a shorter cruise? A shorter cruise is usually those that go over the weekend, like a four day or a five day. Okay. The seventh thing you should know as a first time cruiser is please mm -hmm. get your VIFP number, which is very important fun, fun person. person. That's what it stands for because you're going to get that when you go through and book your cruise, right. but you want to get that before. So right now in your, mm -hmm. in your research process, stop, go to column.com. We're going to link it down below and right. go ahead and apply for your VIFP number mm -hmm. because they may give you an incentive as book. a first timer to book, but you won't know it unless you have that number. So exactly. stop what you're doing right now and make that happen or do it right after this video. Yeah, do it after this video. Don't stop us. <laughs> <laughs> the eighth thing that you want to know as a first-time cruiser, what's not included in your cruise fare? All right, so I think the easiest way to say this is tell you what is included in your Carnival Cruise. So first of all, your cruise, your cabin, taxes, port fees, general food, which excludes your specialty dinings, all of that. Basic beverages. When I say basic, I mean fountain water. Yes. I mean fountain juices like lemonade, tea, unsweetened tea. And in the morning, they may switch it up and do a apple or orange or guava juice. That's it. For the most part, your entertainment, all of that is included. But the things that are not included, like we spoke on, specialty dining, that right. is not included. <clears throat> um, alcoholic beverages not included. Gambling, not included. Gratuities, internet. There are several. We will leave a link below so that you'll be able to get a detailed list of the things yep. that are not included in the cruise. But just know that there are so many things that you can enjoy on the free, free, included, included. But we did want to make you aware of those things that you will have to pay extra for. All right, the ninth thing as a first-time cruiser that you need to know is that when you're going through the booking process on Carnival's website, mm -hmm. make sure you pay attention to the dining times. Yes. So dining times that Carnival have, they have three different types. They have early, late, and mm -hmm. anytime. So early dining time is somewhere around no, six. six. Late yeah. is somewhere around eight. Mm -hmm. Then anytime is in between those particular times. Now, where you want to pay attention to mm -hmm. that, if you don't care when you eat, any time will be perfect for perfect. you. So typically, if me and the queen is taking a cruise with ourselves, we typically just do any time. Because we don't know. Right. <laughs> but if we actually sailing with our friends or family, we always do set time. Right. So that way, every night, we can always have the same table in the same area so everybody knows that dinner is at, at seven. Six or or yeah. seven, yeah. yeah. So... That's when you want to pick that. So make sure you keep that in mind. So we hate for you guys to be split up at dinner. And right. you don't want to be split up at dinner when, you, when you're sailing with your friends and family. Yep. The tenth thing that every first-time cruiser should know is the sign and sail card. Oh, oh yeah. Sail and sign card, however you want to say it. It is your assets on and off the ship. It is your spending account because cruising is cashless. Yes. What I mean by that is... Anytime you want to use some, um, spend some money on the ship, you have to fund your card. It is your room card. That's what. That's kind of the easiest way to describe what it is. Your room key card is also your spending card. You have to link something to it in order to be able to spend. So we got that straight. We recommend that you do it with either cash, which you can add that once you get on board. Or link a credit card to it. Mm -hmm. We don't recommend using a debit card because no, a debit no, no, no. card is going to yield to you to a whole lot of holds yes. on your account. So as you begin to spend, they will authorize more holds just to make sure that you really got the money yep. that you're trying to spend on board. So not only are you going to have the money held up that you are spending, you're also going to have the hold held holding up your real money yes. that you're not going to have access to until those holds fall off. They usually don't fall off until way after you get yeah, off a couple, the sale. Sometimes a couple weeks after your cruise. Yeah, it just depends on your yep. bank. And there's no such thing as calling a bank and telling them to release your holes. That's not going to happen. Guess mm. who used to work in banking for 23 years? We, we, we don't want to hear it. It's going to stay until it falls off. Right, because we had one of that happened to one of our family members, and she mm -hmm. said it was so annoying and so stressed out. Mm -hmm. She was so stressed out because she had all that money, hundreds of dollars held up for weeks. For weeks. Yeah, so yeah, please, so. if you don't listen to nothing else, listen to that one. Yeah, <laughs> cash or a credit card. Yes. And the selection of what you want to do, don't you don't have to make the, the decision now. That will be done in the check-in process two yeah. weeks prior to getting on board. 
Uh, the 11th thing you need to know as a first time Carnival Cruiser is what to put in your carry on bag. Ooh. Now, when I say carry on bag, if you've ever taken a flight, you understand a carry on is a backpack that you carry on the plane with you or duffel. Uh, a duffel bag or a uh, roll. Full. Yeah. So on a cruise, it's different. Mm hmm. Uh, it can be a backpack. It still can be one of your rolling lo luggage. Yeah, it still can, can be, be the anything. same thing. But you want to make sure that you put the proper things in there. So one, mm -hmm. you want to make sure you put your boarding docks in there. You want to make sure that you put your medication in there. Mm -hmm. If you have any type of medical equipment like a CPAP right. machine, you want to make sure you have that in there. Also, back with the medicine, um, this is a bonus for you guys. Right. Make sure you take at least a week or two of extra medicine with yes. you on your trip because you just never know if mm -hmm. something is going to happen. Just recently in the news, we see with all this bad weather out on yeah. the sea that there's been tremendous, a lot of delays, people mm -hmm. out there for days. So don't take, if you got a five-day cruise, exact, don't yeah. take five. Take 10 to 15 on a five-day on a five mm -hmm. cruise and you can do the math on the rest. Right. So also in your carry-on, if you're a person who loves to swim, make sure you take and put your swimwear in there so when you get on the cruise, you can go yeah. and change in the bathroom and get in the, in the water because you would not be able to get to your cabin until 1.30. Two. Yes, I'm like yes. that. <laughs> also, you wanna, also, what you want to put in there is your, is your uh, tumbler. Mm-hmm. And your tumbler is going to be very important on your cruise because yes. that can be used for your drinks. So that way you don't have to run around with their cups and their straws mm -hmm. and your drinks will stay cool, um, little. cooler longer uh, because it's in a tumbler. Also, what you want to put in there is your lanyard until you get your sign and sale card since we mm -hmm. own that. So make sure that is in your bag. Also, you definitely don't want to forget <laughs> this one. Is make sure that you put your wine in there. You remember it's 750 milliliters, mm -hmm. not the liter, because they will take that from oh, they'll you. They'll take that. Yeah, so make sure you have that in your carry on as well. As well. All right, the 12th thing that you need to know is once you get in destination, with, or in port is the right word for it, in port means wherever you're going. If you're going to Cozumel, you're going to Nassau, Bahamas, Freeport, Bahamas, that's what we're talking about. Please avoid using your debit card. Please. Um, a lot of vendors, they shut up shop, and then sometimes everybody is not as honest as others. So to avoid some possible fraud or someone skimming your accounts um, in a foreign country, just go ahead and try to use your cash. If you have to, you can use a credit card import, right. but do not use your debit card. Please. Don't open yourself up to that kind of risk because at the end of the day, if something immediately happens and you're in a foreign territory and you're on a ship, it's going to be heck for you to communicate with your bank immediately right. to be able to get that rectified. When it comes to a credit card, you can just let it fly and you can deal with that later because right. credit cards don't play that kind of stuff. But your debit card, that's your real cash. So let's just go ahead and try to avoid using your debit card in port. The 13th thing you need to know, and this is usually fighting words. Every time we talk Ooh. about this, it, it gets some I'm people scared. heated. <laughs> Prepaid gratuities. Mm -hmm. uh, Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> you got to stay it over here. Yeah. So what Carnival is going to do, if you do not prepay your gratuities before you get on the ship, right. they are going to charge them at the end of the cruise. Mm -hmm. And if you want to have them removed, you have to go down to guest services and stand in that long, long line. line to have them removed. Now, we recommend that you do prepay gratuities yes. because the people, the, the staff on Carnival does they an excellent hard. job. And work very hard to make sure that your cruise is fun, exciting, um, all around a good time. Yeah. And the people that's in the background that that makes a lot of that happen do not get any of the tips. Right. So when you tip at the bar, or if you decide to tip your room stewardess, if you decide to tip anybody on the ship that goes above and beyond, they the only ones that get the tip. But when right. you do the prepaid gratuities, the people it's, that's it's that's doing first. the laundry and the you know people that's you making sure the that makes <laughs> people making sure that the ship is running right. You stop. So it's everybody that's in the background actually gets that so please please pay the pay the pre credit gratuities yeah yeah please yeah tip number 14 a lot of people don't know this but if you go to the bar and they give you a receipt unless you have a drink package which your gratuities is taken care of in your alcohol package tip tip a of tip this tip <laughs> <laughs> 
part B of this tip is there is a gratuity already included in yep. the price of your drink. So when they give you that slip to sign off on, and then it's that blank line that most of us feel guilty for not putting something in there, with Carnival, you don't have to add anything additional. It is added into it already. Yes. Now, if you want to go ahead and tip extra, then just know that's your, your business, and I'm not against that, but just know that it is already included in there. All right, the 15th thing you need to know as a first-time Carnival Cruise, and we get this question all the time, how much cash mm -hmm. should I bring on yeah. my sailing? And we always say it depends. It definitely depends. Now, we used to bring $500, and now we found out that we really don't need to bring that much cash because yes. most we of the time we're bringing either half or 75% of that back home mm -hmm. because the only time we use cash is when we want to tip somebody extra in cash or we buying something in port. Right. Or if we want to feed the casino uh, $20, which that's our, that's our that's gambling our limit. limit, it's $20 <laughs> a piece when we go on the cruise. 50 if we're feeling froggy. Yeah, but most of the time, $20. $20. <laughs> so you don't have to bring a lot of cash. So just think about um, if you want to bring cash for tips, if you want to spend cash at port or you want to spend cash in the casino, then do the math on how much you want to spend there. And then but, add a little something extra just right. for emergency <clears throat> money. Right. Yeah. But other than that, you really don't need to bring a whole lot of cash on, on Carnival yeah. because of the sign and sale card that's cashless. Tip number 16 for the first time cruiser is I get this question a mm -hmm. lot in my travel agency is, is the cheers plan worth it? Hmm. And the question is followed up with a question. Is it worth it to you? Right. Because if you are a true drinker, you know that you are a true drinker. Then the, the, the question answers itself. You right. definitely would probably need that. But if you're a modest drinker and you're a person that, hey, I'm on vacation and I don't want to have to think about it, then it could be. It definitely could be. It's something that we have done and it's something that on Carnival we can do without because right. by the time we finish, we've paid less by just buying them drink by drink than we would have paid for the package itself. So right. just, just work it into... Your own budget. Think about how many drinks you're going to do and see if the overall package is worth it to you. Right. On Carnival, the average price of a drink ranges between eleven fifty and thirteen dollars. Right. So just go high end thirteen dollars, four drinks a day, if that's what you're gonna do a day. See what that works out to be. If you feel like, mm, but you also have to keep in mind there are days that you're gonna be in destination, right. in port, Cozumel. Nassau, got to think about that. You're probably going to be doing those things off the ship, spending money anyway. That your cruise, pa I mean, your cheers package doesn't work out there. Right. That's where so I say, yep. You have to account for all of that when making a decision of whether or not it's worth it. Because for you, it could be. For the next person, it may not be. And and also, if you are a person that you're unsure after hearing our advice, hearing other people's mm -hmm. advice about the cheers package, just go ahead and get it. This your first cruise. Go ahead and get it. And then you can decide from there yep. if the Cheers package is for you. So we did it already. We did it for yeah. her birthday back in 2021. Uh -huh. And we was like, nah, That's this, ain't, this ain't for us. Because what we found ourselves doing, we were just getting drinks to get our money's worth. Because I'm attached yeah. to my money. <laughs> so, you know, I know I had a hangover a few days because I was drinking them, throwing them back. I'm like, I don't pay seven hundred dollars for this thing, huh? I'm gonna get my money. Pass worth. me another drink, bartender. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So keep that in mind too. Yeah, so just you just may have to just go ahead and do it, mm -hmm. and then from that point on, you'll, you'll know, definitely know. You'll know. The seventeenth thing you need to know as a first time Carnival cruiser is mm -hmm. as soon mm -hmm. as you board the ship. Make sure Say you put again. your phone in airplane, airplane mode. And the reason we said that, because once you get in the thick of the fun on Carnival, you're going to forget yep. all <laughs> about that. Yes. And people have been charged hundreds, hundreds. and sometimes even thousands of dollars mm -hmm. in roaming charges because their phone was constantly trying to get a signal while they was out there in the middle seat. of the ocean. Now, here's your fail safe. When you... Um, download your Carnival Hub app, and once you get on the ship to activate, because that's not activated until you get on the ship. Right. It's basically a countdown clock until you get there. Mm -hmm. But sooner you get on the ship and you go to your Carnival Hub app, they have it right in there put to on put your mode. phone in airplane yeah, mode. So they actually tell you to because they don't want you to be charged out of that money. So make a mental note of that, mm -hmm. and please don't forget that. Exactly. 
The 18th tip to know is arrive in your departure city a day early. At least a day early. (laughs) The reason for that being is anything can go wrong. Now, you may ask, well, if it's a couple of hours away, da 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 you may be able to not do it if you're just like a drive away, a couple of hours away. But I will say leave early yes. because you're going to need to have that buffer in there in case something happens where you have to course correct. But if you have to fly in, don't fly in the day of. Even if you make it to the ship without anything happening, that is stressful. Yes. We have did it a few times, mm-hmm. but it is stressful. And so, you be wore out. And you're worn out. Tomorrow. My cousin has told me, <laughs> and I didn't notice. And as much as me and my cousin traveled together, she said, do you know that when we went on Virgin together was the first um, sail away party I've ever made it to? Like, and really? We didn't, we didn't even realize. Yeah. She said, because I'm tired, I right. fall asleep. Yep. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, you are always missing at sail away. I be partying, so I don't even be noticing. Right. So we had one year that we, uh, cause we try to do a, a group cruise with our family annually. Yes. And we was actually, so the queen always makes sure we leave at least three, four hours early, mm-hmm. just in case we have any mishaps and going in on the day of the cruise. Mm-hmm. And while we was going and the goddamn bus broke down on the interstate, not even 15 minutes from the house. From the house. And it took about a little over an hour for us to get switched out. Yes. But I just was imagining that we had left like, because we we only like a couple of hours from our cruise port. Mm -hmm. So we had left, you know, maybe about a half hour or hour before. We most likely probably would have missed the ship. Mm -hmm. Um, Fooling around with that. And then we had a couple that we met last year that they did come in the day before and they was driving their brand new truck and the truck broke down. Right. So they had to end up getting that straight. But thank God that they, they came, came in a day, day early. Before. They still was able to make the cruise. Mm-hmm. So, so much could go wrong. Your 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 flights could get canceled. Yep. Uh, you could Delayed. get sick. Somebody in your family could get sick. It just so much that can happen. Yeah. Um, just think about my husband just lost his license. Yes. On our last yes. cruise. Thankfully, we had a nice doctor that found his license and mailed them back to us yes, certified. Man. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it's so much can happen. So that that day before is a game changer. It is. Yes. All right. The 19th thing you need to know as a first time cruiser, and you're going to love this one because this is a great way for you to meet some people yes, it that is. you would probably would never meet if you did not do this is join the Facebook group for your yep. sailing. And how you do that, you just go to Facebook, type in whatever um, ship you're on Mm -hmm. and the dates of your cruise. And if somebody has created the group, you should be able to see it and join it. And what's so nice about that, uh, most of the time what people will do is they will plan um, gift giveaways, bar crawls, meetups. Mm -hmm. Uh, Slot pools. Yes. So it's so much that can go on and you can meet so many good people Mm -hmm. by doing that. Uh, We've gotten feedback from several of our subscribers, our family that said, thank you so much for giving us this tip. Mm -hmm. It's been a game changer for us. It's nice. So make sure that once you do it and get on your ship, come back and let us know how how it was a game changer for you. Exactly. All right. The 20th tip that you need to know is there is an elegant night on your sailing. So let's go ahead and say up to five night sailings have one elegant night. Six plus nights have at least two elegant nights. You'll have your first elegant night. That will be on your first sea day, which is usually day two of your cruise. So just go ahead and make a mental note of that. If you want to get jazzed up, you can get jazzed up. If you want to take it a little bit low key, you can do that as well. The good thing about Carnival is they're not as strict as other cruise lines may be when it comes to Elegant Night, but they do ask you to just judge it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And also, um, with Elegant Night, uh, we talked about this in a few videos that if you want to get the pictures because your pictures... Mm -hmm. When you when you all decked out in your outfits for Elegant Night, Why those not? pictures are gonna look good. Yes. So go yes. ahead and go and get you the picture package. We yes. always recommend getting the one that's ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cent. Keeps because, you on task. Yep, it gets you five photos, mm-hmm. and it keeps you on budget because on our first cruise we spent. Over four hundred dollars in pictures, and like we always say, over three hundred at least. Yeah, and and they has never ever made a wall. Not, so now no all one. we do is we either buy the ninety nine dollar package or we just buy one or two of the digital Digitals. prints, 
and call it a day. We ain't never going to spend that much money on no pictures again. No, we know what we look like. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, the 21st thing you need to know mm -hmm. is your online check-in. And this wow. is very, very important mm -hmm. that you do not miss this. Yes. Um, you will get this email from Carnival about two weeks before your cruise. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be asked a series of questions a that, of you, that you have to answer for Carnival before you board the ship. So here's the, the most important parts on that thing other than the question they're going to ask you. This is where you're going to print off your boarding pass. Mm -hmm. And this is where you're going to print off your luggage tags. And this is when you're going to pick the time that you're actually going to board the ship. Yep. Uh, let me horn in on that right there. Come close Please. a little bit. If you pick 1130, don't show up at 9 yes. because you're wasting your time. They're going to turn you around and say you got to come back at, at your, your 1130 time. time. So showing up early in this case is not a benefit like when you show up early for work. <laughs> and sometimes it ain't a benefit there because they don't give you no more money because you show up early. <laughs> so please be on the lookout for that and those three things. Make sure that you don't forget that because you want you need your boarding pass, you need your luggage tags, and you definitely need to pick a time that you're gonna get on the ship. Also, mm -hmm. if you are if you coming with a group or your friends and family and all oh, you guys yeah. want to get on the ship at the same time, make sure all of you guys <laughs> are up at 12 a.m. On that night, so that you all can pick the same, same time. time. Uh, not 12.01, not 12.03, not 12.02. It's a headache. Yes. It got to be right at 12 because those times go like that. Especially the early ones. Yes, because everybody's trying to get there early. So please don't forget that online check-in two weeks before you cruise. And also during the check-in process, this is when you will be able to say, I want to fund my sign of sale, sale sign yes. card with cash or credit card. Because what did I say about debit cards? It's not a good idea. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> the 22nd thing that every first-time cruiser should know is, although you have taken your time mm -hmm. and you have selected the perfect itinerary for you and your family, you have searched your excursions, and like, I'm going to do this in Cozumel, I'm going to do this in Costa Maya, yep. just know that if something needs to change because, one, bad weather, yes. emergencies, or something happens to the ship, or they just feel like it's in the best interest of the passengers to go to another destination at that time, it is an executive decision that can happen. Is it very rare? It, does it happen all the time? Absolutely not. No one would cruise if they were like, y'all just going to scramble and pick where we go. But just like last week, there were some crazy storms out right. on the ocean. And there are a lot of ports that these ships could not go into because the water was too rough. Right. So just keep in mind that you may have your hopes set on going to Bimini, Bahamas. We were on a cruise a couple of months ago. Yeah. And we were supposed to be going to Bimini. We had a whole plan about what we were going to do because yep. it was our group cruise. And it was too choppy for us to, bo um, to, to dock there. So we had to end up going to Freeport, Baham no, Nassau, Bahamas yeah. instead. Where and it was we were safer. mad. Yeah, where it was safer for us to get off at. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And then also with the itinerary changes, that's in Carnival's contract. It is in their contract. So, um, if it happens to you, don't be talking about, I'm going to sue Carnival I'm and I'm going to get, get my verified. money back. and all. Nah, you signed a contract with that. So. When you made your deposit, you signed a contract. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> itinerary changes is a part of that. It is a part of it. And not only the itinerary changes, they can alter the times yeah. that you were supposed to be in that destination as well. And like we said, most of the time, it's for it's, it's for safety measures yeah. or something happened on that ship where they had to divert for a minute and maybe y'all lost some time. Yeah, and don't and don't be fearful. This hardly, hardly uh, happens. Yeah, like this, like we done been on several cruises and this year was the only year that happened to us once. It's only yeah. happened to us once. And we just had one where they had uh, like an itinerary flip we still yeah. went to the same destinations, but the order of them did change. Right. But other than that, like we said, we've been on a lot of cruises here lately, and it's only been happening to us once. Yep. The 23rd thing you need to know as a first-time Carnival cruiser is you must book your excursions and mm -hmm. specialty dining early. Please. Here's why. <laughs> because these things book up very quickly. Mm -hmm. We have been trying to get on the ATVs for, for the last two years and we go to book them early. And, and every time gone. we go, it's only one 
ATV available, and we need to. And we need to. Yes, yeah, so please. We finally got it last year. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, finally. But it took two years. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, if you if you out there research and you see some specialty diners you want to do and excursions, go ahead. Don't think about it second. Uh, yeah. Don't think about it. Just go ahead and book them because mm-hmm. they do book up fast. They do. All right, tip number 24 for the first time, Cruiser. Let me tell you, if you don't hear me say anything else, listen to me now. Do not book a cruise unless you're almost 100% certain that you are committed to going no matter what happens. And the reason that I say this is that most of Carnival's promotions and deals that they have going on immediately puts you in a penalty period after the first 24 hours. So if you're thinking about, ooh, like a hotel, ooh, I have 72 hours before I arrive, I can cancel. This does not happen with cruises. Mm -mm. And cruises do have some um, promotions or some deals that you can book into where you have refundable deposits. But when I tell you the deposits are so expensive that most people don't book them. Right. But if you're a person and your first time or most of the time, what you're going to gravitate to is the early savers or the get up and go promotions, right. whatever they got going on that entice you to come in, automatically, for the most part, after 24 hours, you're in the penalty stage of losing the deposit that you just put down. Right. Point blank to the period. Day three, you wake up and say, mm, I want to do this cruise. And if you pay $75 per person as a deposit and you got two people in a the cabin, then 150 is already gone. Yep. Like you literally just lost your 150. And then if you went ahead and purchased your insurance after a certain period, which is usually 14 days, your insurance is non-refundable. So just think about all of those things before you commit to booking a carnival cruise. Just know that they are in the business of making money. Yes. And the moment you cancel, they're still in the business of making money. Yep. And we've had... <clears throat> And we don't have countless people come back and tell us, and even in our travel mm-hmm. agency, there are people have taken eaten penalties. Yes. Um, because they wasn't sure they wanted to go. And then it's another reason. So you want to stick around towards the end because we're gonna let you know one crucial thing that could really cost you to get that penalty Uh-oh. if you not care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was gonna be good. Yes. Also, make sure that you are committed to the sailing that you selected. Yes. Because Carnival also charges you to change your sailing date. Yes. So if you say, Oh, I think I see another one that I like a little better, oh, they might let you do it. But they're going to charge you a penalty for changing it. And here lately, Carnival has gotten really strict where they are trying to treat it as a cancellation. So what they're doing is say, oh, if you want to get on that one, then cancel this one. And what I already told you your cancellation was, at least your deposit. Right. I want to go on this one. So then you have to start over. Make sure you're committed to what it is that you are booking when you book it. Don't be flaky about it because being flaky or unsure is going to cost you. All right. <laughs> the 25th thing that you need to the know best that. Best one. Yes. Choose your travel partners wisely. We have gotten countless stories of people saying, I, I try to travel with my best friend. I try Ooh. to travel with my family. I try to travel with my coworkers. And then they started acting flaky. They booked and then they canceled, didn't let me know. Mm-hmm. Or they was acting like they did book another they book didn't. and I booked. Or we booked the cabin together and about six months in, they decide, they, they say, I ain't got the money. So please choose your cabin mate wisely because we want you to still be family and <laughs> friends when it's over. Now, here are some warning signs for you tell them baby yes so if you go and you approach your family or friends about taking a cruise if anybody starts to hum and ha x them out immediately yeah don't even pursue it yes because that's a show enough sign that they really don't want to go but they might tell you yes because they don't want to hurt your feelings right the second one is if you know that person is already struggling financially to pay their bills, mm. most of the time you know that from family and friends that you're close to. Yes. If they are struggling, don't yeah, book a trip with them. 
Because if they can't pay their electric bill, what makes you think they're going to be able to pay for this cruise? Well, some of them do. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, some yeah. of them will still do it, but it's a, it's a show no sign that they will not go. Right. So if they show any signs of hesitation, Don't move on to move somebody on. else. Find somebody. We would say find somebody that you know that does travel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they take cruises. They go to resorts. They go to hotels. Every right. time they can shake and move, they, they move. They it. with it. Right. So you know their yes is a yes and their nay is a nay. Absolutely. So, yes, please, if you don't listen to anything else, and we know that 2024 um, is underway here, and we want you to have a fun, stress-free, and confident cruise, but make sure you take the right people with you. Absolutely. All right, if you enjoyed this video, you mm. want to check out this video, Nick's 21 <laughs> Mistakes to Avoid on Your First Countable Cruise that will save you time and money on your first countable cruise. Absolutely. And we're going to see you in the next video. Peace. Peace.